My name is Tembi Machogose, and I'm from Ward 67 in Yuval. So we do a lot of community work. And uh, I just want to talk about the Indulamiti project né? as a community. We joined the Indulamiti project because uh, I think Colin will tell you more about it. But I want to say it's such a good initiative by E Sacred Heart and all the other schools, and there are other members of the community who really like the idea of Indulamiti project. In fact, they are actively involved. We have the Property Owners Association, the SAPS is here, they've been involved from day one, and we have primary schools and independent schools and members of the community. And the purpose of Indulamiti Project, just maybe you're asking yourself why Indulamiti Project, the purpose is to make sure that there are safe routes for children. Because our children in Yuba, they're exposed to a lot of crime. Some get mad, some get stabbed, you know, they take their pocket money and it's a daily thing, you know. So the idea of safe routes for children came in for us, and as a community, we really embraced it. There are more organizations that are interested in the Indulamity Project in the church, in the community. Even churches are interested. But what we need to do is to you know, have a, a, a collective, a big structure that will actually accommodate everybody. So it is a good idea. And it's an idea that I think will ensure the safety of children. Because not only do, does, does crime affect children when they go to school, but the biggest challenge that our children have now is that even at school, the, the teachers are affected if kids don't go to school. So the idea of Indulamiti is a really good one. And we, as a community, we embrace it and we support it and we'd like to see more of such initiatives taking place. I think the other projects will be, de will be described by other people, but I just want to say as a community, we are buying in and we really like the idea and we want to, we want to see it growing because we've got more than 10,000 children in Yuval, you know, who are attending school and a lot of them are exposed to danger. And I think that is what the media really needs to highlight in, in, in your press clippings, you need, in your writings, you need to make sure that you expose these things because we don't understand why older people will go and step a child going to school and even take their lunches and everything. So the safety aspect is very, very important and in the Lamiti project is providing that. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry to rush you, but I know that we've got limited time and everyone has something to say. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Mayor and the interview, we just want to welcome you. I'm not sure who's here who's not here, but for protocol, we are all welcome. My point is to talk on the limit on based from the principal point of view. Uh, my name is Renera Singo. I'm the principal of Yuval Boys Primary School. We are part of this project in Dolamiti. The problem what we have in Yuval is that the schools become a safe haven, and then the street become a life hazard. So this project is trying to cap that situation, where we are trying to create Mula Street as a safe street where the kids can move from Yeovil until they go to Sacred Heart so that they can have the access to all the resources that Sacred Heart have. So when we meet as four schools, which is the schools that are on Muller Street with Sacred Heart, the idea was that we want to create that thing, a safe street. But more above that, our learners should be safe when they're straight. As much as they're safe in the school, they should also be safe in the street. I think you guys, as you were moving around, we have seen how Yuval looked like and how it feels like to be Yuval. So we are trying to keep that issue. But the main thing is that as they share these resources, 
they build relationship with one another. The kids from Uvel Boys and the kids from Uvel Community and kids from Observatory, they should not see themselves as different pieces, but they should see themselves as same children that are at Uvel that have the same access to everything that is there. So that is the main reason of this planet. And we hope and we trust that the community will share the same idea and will help us to maintain that. So we are looking forward to this project. Thank you. Where is Naya? Hi, hello. Um, I'm Dom Simka. I'm a drama teacher at United Church Schools. Um, what I'd like to first start off, we all, let me start like this. We all know that it's a child's right to have education. With that right, we also have the child needs a, a, a good environment, a cohesive environment, a conducive environment to study. We all know that. All right, so that's what Ndrula Miti is about. Ndrula Miti is here to bring safety, security for the kids at school. Because the kids should not go to school and then come, be worried about coming out of school in a, a, an environment that is not safe. And um, Ndrula Miti is working very hard uh, to ensure that. Another thing that Ndrula Miti will be bringing is Wi-Fi as well. Now this is great for me because it speaks about the bigger picture. The bigger picture here is that we're going into the fourth industrial revolution. This is no, this is no life. This is what's happening right now. So we need to get with the times. And I think Wi-Fi plays a big role for the kids so that they can have access to information. So there's no excuses. They can just develop and grow and get better with time. So uh, Madrilla Miti is about that as well, and they're gonna be putting Wi-Fi hopefully at the schools as well. If we get this opportunity, if we get um, the funds for them as well, then we can put that in there for the kids. It has a lot, it will give them better opportunities, better jobs, income, so that we can be hired as well for better income as well. So I think that is very great. When it comes to the arts, I think I do arts as well. Let me just speak about that. With the arts program, uh, we teach the kids to think creatively, uh, cre to use creativity as well, and think critically as well. So um, I think that is very good because it also contributes to the fourth industrial revolution where the kids need to be able to think critically and creativity, um, creatively. Like Thank you. you. <laughs> Right, good afternoon all. Um, I'm going to uh, also speak to Indula Miti. As a, my name is Lizzie. I'm the principal of the school. And as a girls' school, this is a girls' school, we actually embraced Indula Miti, particularly for our girls' safety. Because every time they walk home or they come to school in the morning, that's where they meet these hooligans <coughs> in the street. And as girls, they find themselves vulnerable at all times. And maybe what are we benefiting from this Indulamity as well? We had actually grown our spheres also into maybe trying uh, on how to write a proposal, trying to source out funds to renovate the school and grow Indulamity project as well. You can see Observatory Girls is a very old school. So the structure is very old, it's more than 100 years old, but uh, the coming in of Indulamity has also assisted us. Um, we managed to secure uh, a sponsor from the Australian High, uh, High Commissioners, wherein they are actually helping in a lot of projects. As I speak now, they are renovating our kitchen. We are going to make a very beautiful kitchen where we are going to accommodate you guys when you come for the meeting, for Indulamity meeting. So I, I really embrace this, and when we, we, we announced this to our parents, they actually loved it, because it is actually speaking to the safety of their little ones. I really want to thank you, and I also want to thank uh, Sacred Heart, because this was their brainchild. It's, it's actually them that, uh, that brought us into the picture, and that's them that actually made sure that the, all the schools around here are one. And we are also doing that through sports. All the schools around here are together and we use Secret Heart as our, our venue for all the sporting activities. And lastly, you will recall that uh, schools were once granted the, the, the tablets. And later on, our MEC for Education 
took the, the tablets Sim uh, under the false pretense that they are going to put some uh, security devices only to find that they were taking those tablets to the high school learners. So we were left with no tablets. And what happened is through this uh, Indulamiti and, and the Australian uh, 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 High Commissioner, we were able to be, we were actually awarded some tablets. I think we've got how many? 40. Yes, around 40 tablets. So our computer center is, uh, is actually dressed up with those. Thank you. I'm going to end off if you don't mind. My name is Colin Northmore. I'm the head of Sacred Art College. I want to emphasize something very clearly today. Sacred Art may have had the idea, but this is a community endeavor. And I think one thing that was given to us as feedback from the Jansburg Development Agency is how well we as a group worked together, how little conflict there was between us, and how combined and united we were in delivering a proposal to the JDA to get the safe streets. But in Vulamiti, as most of you know, it's the, it's the word for giraffe, and it derives from the idea that the giraffe doesn't have to settle for the rubbish that's on the floor, but can eat the sweetest leaves that are at the top of the tree. And so actually, in Vulamiti, the memorandum of understanding that we've all signed is a lot more ambitious than just trying to get safe streets for children to walk in. Basic, the basic premise of Indulamiti is that every child in Yeovil should experience a world-class education. Um, and, and there's no way that a school like Sacred Heart, which admittedly is one of the most expensive schools in Johannesburg, can sit with all its resources and all the privilege that it has and not be part of its community and not be part of the solution and also benefit from some of those solutions. Now, I just have to correct one thing though, because the funders will not forgive me. It was actually the Mary Oppenheimer and Daughters Trust that paid for the tablets that came to, to uh, Observatory Girls. So I want to thank you all. I'm going to finish off by saying there's lovely food waiting. I'm sure you could all enjoy a bite to eat. So I'm going to say the words every audience likes to hear a speaker say. And in conclusion, <laughs> and, and in conclusion, we would. We, we value this relationship, we value all the support that the JDA have given us in getting this far. We really look forward to taking it to the next level. We deeply appreciate you, sir, for, for coming and seeing us and being part of this. Um, that's exactly what we want from a mayor and that's exactly what you're delivering to us. And so, incredibly grateful to, to you for your interest and for your team being here. Yavonga Gakul. Um, to our host here today, thank you very much for, for hosting us. It really is a privilege for, for us to, to have the mayor here as well. The, this project is something that lies close to the heart of, of the JDA, the, the whole concept of our city, our block. Because at the end of the day, whatever the city does, and in particular what the JDA is doing, it is with the outcome that it needs to improve the lives of all community members irrespective of, of where we work. And the privilege that we had um, of actually showing the mayor uh, the work that we do, the impact that we are having on, on the community is of immense pride to, to the team of, of the JDA. <coughs> but colleagues from the rest of the city here as well, um, guys, thank you for coming along. I hope that you also now understand more about the incredibly difficult but important work that the JDA and the Department of Development Planning are doing under the leadership of, of NMC Masangu and then obviously Mr. Mayor for, for you being here with us today, uh, taking interest in, in what we do because at the end of the day we are delivering on the constituency that you represent and I'd love you, for you to just end off this whole day for us. Thank you very much uh, to colleagues uh, from uh, JDA for inviting me to this, uh, starting with the MMC of uh, Development Planning, uh, JDA falling under his uh, political direction, and the rest of the team from the city and some people from the media. But in particular you, the teachers, uh, taking the interest of our future uh, at heart. 
it actually pains me to, to listen to teachers being concerned about the safety of children coming to school. I mean, what kind of nation are we? What kind of human beings are we? I think it looks like we're worse than animals because animals don't actually hate uh, one another or each other. The only time animals obviously hate, that's when they have to eat. Lions have got to eat. Uh, that's why they kill. They don't just really kill for the sake of killing. I find it difficult for human beings for killing <coughs> one another. For what? Because you can't eat me. What nation have we become? A society, any self-respecting nation anywhere in the world, the first call of ensuring the success of the nation is when you have uh, police, the, the rule of law. The reason why we sit in like this that way we can we are unable to provide protection to our children is because this country destroyed the rule of law. There are no consequences for criminals out there. They are roaming like free. They are the ones who actually enjoy the benefit of the new South Africa. We voted, all of us, in 1994, after coming out of the evil system of apartheid, thinking that we are going to have freedom. Unfortunately, freedom is enjoyed by criminal elements, protected in all respects. As law-abiding citizens, are victims, including kids, including our youth. So you can imagine uh, for kids feeling unsafe going to come into school, where schools have got to get together to say, how do we protect them? From our, from fellow human beings. It's actually, it's a tragedy. It's a shame for us South Africans. We need to really look at ourselves in a mirror and actually f see if we can find solutions uh, to this massive challenge. So I'm really, very really grateful that um, JD, uh, uh, JDA has taken the responsibility to work with you to ensure that for, yeah, eventually we can provide protection and the safety to our youth. But however, we're not going to succeed for as long as we don't, uh, there's no political will in this country to sort this matter out. And I'm afraid, and I'm not here to politic, I'm here to talk the truth to power. Unfortunately, the reason why we are failing is because there's no political will. Every time when I see our law enforcement agencies, I feel sorry for them. I can imagine if you're a policeman in this country every morning, you have to wake up, go to work, when you know that you don't have political support to carry out your responsibility as a policeman to protect society. But, but fortunate enough, I've got hope and a very strong belief that we will come out of this tragedy because it is a tragic situation. We survived apartheid, the nearly wild wanted, the world wanted to destroy some of us. And fortunate enough, it did not succeed. We are facing another evil in the new dispensation. I'm quite confident that people of this country are going to, to win against this evil. Because it is evil what is happening in our country at the moment. When we cannot protect our youth, when we cannot protect our children. But thank you so much for this initiative and thank you to JDA for coming to the party to ensure that I think ultimately our nation can really be protected. The youth, it's actually, they are our future. We cannot afford a situation where children are brought up in an environment where violence is the order of the day. We see this every day in media platforms. 14-year-old kids stabbing one another, teachers being harassed by the youth. Something tells you something really went terribly wrong in this nation. But I'm confident that the political direction going forward will change this so that you can be a normal society again one day. So in the meantime, keep on doing what you are doing. 
until such time that one day you can have the political direction that can give you the hope. Right now, um, I sympathize with you. There's a reason why I do the work that I'm doing. Very difficult job, but I'm still hopeful that one day the truth will find and good men and women of this country will take back this country and make it a shining example of what the world should be. So thank you very much for really giving me this exposure of what is happening in our country, in our city, the type of challenges that our people have to face on a daily basis. So the teachers, management of the schools, please carry on, don't give up hope. Thank you very much. Thanks, Colin. Um, Mr. Mayor, MMC, I think we'll take up the, the opportunity now um, of enjoying the refreshments that the schools put on before us. Uh, once again, thank you for everybody um, for uh, being with us uh, on this tour with the, with the Mayor and the MMC today.